Thank you very much, Camille. And uh, thank you very much, Goldie, the entire FedScoop team, the uh, sponsors of this event, and, um, and all of you for being here and being willing to come and listen to me this morning. I'll have to tell you, I'm a little nervous about coming out here today because uh, it's been a while since I've actually uh, been on the stage in a theater. In fact, uh, the last time I was on a stage in the theater was uh, senior year in high school. Uh, when we produced, uh, my school produced, uh, uh, Aeschylus's Oresteia. Yeah, I know, how cool is that? But um, <laughs> uh, we had a very ambitious theater director. Not only did he think that Aeschylus's Oresteia would be a great idea for a senior play, he thought we should do it in, uh, in the context of cubism. And so uh, we enlisted the entire art department. By the way, I played uh, soldier number two. Uh, uh, a role that is about as important, frankly, as it sounds. Uh, so anyways, I, I was a little nervous. We had this play that, you know, and it, it was complicated. Well, what we're going to talk about today is also complicated. <laughs> this is the org chart of the United States federal government. The little blue arrow you saw come in there, that is the General Services Administration. Um, the fact is, the reason why the government is complicated is because we ask it to do complex and varied things. We have a $3.8 trillion budget. We have 1.8 million civilian employees. We ask it to do things like keep airplanes a safe distance from each other, our borders protected, our food uh, uh, guarded. Um, we ask it on the weekends to cure cancer. I mean, we ask an awful lot of this organization. It's a complex, complicated organization. And over, uh, over the last couple of centuries, it's developed into a very complicated hierarchy. It, it needs that hierarchy, though, to be able to take information from the field, push it up uh, into leadership levels, into decision-making levels, so that could get converted into decisions, so we can allocate resources, so that we can figure out ways to actually uh, make the organization operate. And that actually takes a uh, physical form. Uh, there you go. It takes a physical form. We actually uh, build our physical environments. Whoops, I hit too many times. Um, we build our physical environments to reflect the organizational hierarchy of, um, of, the, uh, of, the, of the entity, of the government. And so if you think about it in many ways, this is kind of the expression of the highest end of the hierarchy. You walk into this office, you stand before this desk, you know where you sit in the hierarchy. You sit behind the desk, you're also reminded of where you sit in the hierarchy, your roles and responsibilities and what you're supposed to do. And maybe since the time of Aeschylus, this worked pretty well into the mid part of the last century as a way for us to process complicated information and get work done. Uh, sometime in the mid middle part of the last century, we recognized that the organization had gotten bigger, uh, the demands on, uh, on the resourcing had gotten higher, and so simply pushing things through uh, via paper using uh, uh, mail and telegraph, uh, traveling by train, wasn't sufficient to meet the demands of an expanding uh, economy, uh, meet the demands of uh, an expanding population. And so we began to automate things. Uh, we found ways to actually uh, improve productivity by using electromechanical devices. This is my favorite device, the robo pen which took the productivity of the person sitting in that wood-paneled corner office and pushed it uh, through the roof, multiplying it by two or even three times. <laughs> well, the pace of change sped up. And when I started in, in the federal government in 1991, this machine started showing up on people's desks. Now, um, my father was born in 1924 in Boston, Massachusetts, and at that time, uh, there were more horses than there were any other form of conveyance for getting people around town. My kids think that this is the computer he played video games on when he was growing up. <laughs> and if you think about it in many ways, um, I can understand why they think that this is uh, this, this nothing more antique looking than this. But at the time, I remember when it came to, uh, uh, to the office at the Office of Management and Budget where I worked, I had a boss who said, look, don't even bother sending me an email. I'm not going to read it. It's not the way we get work done here. The subtext was, I don't think that fad is going to catch on. <laughs> because that's not the way we had been taught in order how to manage information, how we're going to transfer information, how we're actually going to make government work, how we're actually going to get the work done. 
We had built ourselves a hierarchy, a set of organizational structures, a way of delivering results and outcomes that was more reflective, frankly, of the large corner wood paneled office and maybe to some extent the robo pen. But this began to transform and change the way we delivered services. I remember when I moved over to the city government, which was a little behind the federal government, particularly in 1998, someone mentioned to me that they had to send a particular thing we were working on down to typing. And I asked them, what's typing? Well, it's exactly what you think it is. It was a room full of people with typewriters. It was going to type up whatever it was that we were either going to send up to the big corner wood paneled office or get back down from the big corner wood paneled office so it could then be robo penned and sent out to whoever is going to have to act on it. Um, we have completely obliterated some of those ways of doing that work. We've transformed the way we deliver some of those services. And you can see that the, uh, the pace of change has sped up. Let's speed up to six years ago when we started putting these things in our pockets. I remember when I got the first generation iPhone, I felt like I had mugged an alien and stolen, <laughs> stolen their teleporter. I mean, this thing was insane what you could do. And my kids love this picture because they say, Daddy, what's that thing on the left? It's a CD, sweetie. Um, <laughs> And if I didn't get the newspaper delivered to the door every morning, I'm not sure they'd know what the thing on the top is either. But the fact is, what's in our pocket, the ability to actually engage in commerce, to communicate, to share, to photograph, to discuss, to collaborate. Who even knew what an app was five years ago? Never mind that you needed one or that there was such a thing as a killer app. <laughs> killer app sounded scary probably five years ago. Now it sounds cool and I need to get it immediately. And so that's the transformation that's begun to happen. And I'm beginning to, I'm wondering if we have really internalized and recognized what's sweeping across uh, 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 the technology landscape and what the demands of the people who are working with us in the government environment are going to expect. I think about the way my kids do their homework and the way they collaborate and the way they cooperate. They're constantly in touch with each other, constantly communicating with each other. That's the expectation they're going to have for the way that governments are able to deliver services. But it doesn't necessarily have to be scary. There are huge opportunities here for us to leverage the scale and the scope to take um, the ability to communicate amongst each other, collaborate with each other, to push all that energy to some of these giant problems that we're confronting, because the problems are, in fact, getting more substantial and more complicated. The resources are getting more constrained, and the expectations are increasing at the same time. Look, what's happened just over the last 10 years is that we've gone from people with about 32 million people in the United States with access to broadband in 2002, just about 10 years ago. Just last year, we had 1.2 billion people with access to broadband worldwide in their pocket. And people have been using that broadband um, quite dramatically. Mobile data traffic is up to 885 petabytes uh, uh, in just last year, 2012. A dozen times what it was just in 2000. We are inventing these weird new sounding words to try to describe the size of the amount of information we're getting. And um, that increase, that change, is speeding up. It's happening even faster. We've seen mobile data growth 70% between 2011 and 2012. And the simple fact is that more and more people are creating, they're, they're uh, collaborating, they're sharing, they're looking for information. People are looking for information right now uh, as I talk, uh, trying to figure out uh, how that they, they can participate in their government, how they can contribute to the economy, how they can uh, engage in commerce, and how they can stay in touch with each other. Think about even the way we used to do something as simple as getting a, a movie on the weekend uh, to, um, uh, to spend a little time, you know, a little downtime. Um, and I thought it was a pretty cool thing when, you know, when I was growing up that you could actually you know, go to a movie store and you could get a movie. You didn't have to wait for it to show up on, uh, on that special uh, show that happened you know, once a month. Um, you could actually go and you could uh, not, if you missed it in the movie theater, if you loved it in the movie theater, you could go and you could see it again. You could go to this really cool place called the Video Store. And how did the Video Store get it? It had come from Hollywood, gone to some factory, and had been distributed through several layers of distribution, gone to the Video Store where you would either drive, bike, walk, take the bus, pick it up, take it home, enjoy it, and then take it back. How do we do it today? We do it 
through the cloud straight to your uh, computer. And I, I joke, it's like a reverse ATM in my house. The kids are constantly downloading <laughs> these movies. Um, and you know, it's easy to get, and it's, you don't even have to worry about going back. It goes back on its own. Now think about an environment in which that is the expectation for service delivery. And think about the way that we have to begin to change how we deliver services to the American public when they're expecting to be able to do this in just uh, in almost anything they do. Well, we have to physically even change the way we lay out our space, and we have to ask ourselves, are there faster and easier ways for us to collaborate, communicate, share information, and make decisions within the, uh, the environment in which we work in federal agencies? What you're looking at here is my office. That's my desk right there. And um, uh, I'm within, sorry, I'm within uh, 40 feet of the, um, the people who uh, uh, help me run the agency. They're the Public Building Service Commissioner, the Federal Acquisition Service Commissioner. We went from being four miles apart uh, in three different office buildings to being 40 feet apart, literally ripping down the walls and the barriers so that we can actually share, collaborate uh, around information, deal with crises, uh, handle problems, and begin to streamline the decision process, decision making process, so we can make things uh, happen faster. I, I'll have to tell you, when we first moved in there, and it's only been about two weeks, one of the first things that happened was people rolled in the, uh, the uh, robo pens. And we had three robo pens. Um, I would look forward to visiting the GSA auction site for some very good deals on robo pens coming <laughs> up. But um, the point is that uh, we need to actually physically transform the way we relate to each other and the way we manage um, our, our agencies so that we can begin to collapse uh, the, the time it takes to make decisions and the ability for us to respond to different issues. In order to do that, though, we need to move more of our information uh, to the cloud. We need to find ways that we're able to access that information. We're able to get a hold of what we need. We're able to push our, our critical systems to a place where we can get them when we need them, where we need them, when we're working, where we're working. Um, and that actually has uh, proven itself to allow us to be a more resilient and sustainable organization. Right after Superstorm Sandy, we found the value of the cloud in GSA by the fact that people who could not even get on uh, the subway, never mind to get to the office building because both were closed down. In one case, one heroic uh, worker of ours was able to find the one coffee shop with Wi-Fi. She was able to use her laptop to log into our critical systems and was able to begin the process of helping us get the rest of the federal agencies back to work by giving them access to their networks and access to their uh, physical um, facilities. And it's this transition to the cloud that GSA has been really uh, working hard to demonstrate leadership in. And uh, a quick shout out to Casey Coleman, our fantastic CIO. I know she was on that, that great uh, panel, Women in Technology Leadership. Thank you. Um, she demonstrates that kind of aggressive, uh, 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 innovative leadership within the organization, say, how can we find ways to reduce costs, improve value? and increase mobility. We think that uh, uh, our transition to the cloud has helped GSA become more resilient, but we also think by pushing more information into the cloud and recognizing that that's where people are going, that's the people we work for are going to get their information more and more, um, we, can, uh, we can help provide better information to folks. In, uh, in the events of Hurricane Sandy, after uh, uh, Hurricane Sandy, people turned uh, to the internet and they turned to uh, agencies who had been updating uh, their various social media. Sorry, I'm trying to signal up to the, uh, the booth there to move me ahead. Um, uh, did you get that? Uh, they had been turning to, apparently not. Um, uh, there we go. Uh, they had uh, they'd been uh, signaling, they'd been going to the various agencies trying to get information. Each one of the agencies was trying very aggressively to move information out to folks and tell people, you know, here's how to apply for this loan, or here's, uh, here's the latest uh, storm information, or here's the storm surge data. But if, um, if we allowed ourselves to organize ourselves in the normal way, agency by agency by agency, we'd require people to go and try to figure out where that data was from. We were able at GSA to link together through APIs all that different social media, allow people to subscribe to the type of information they want, and push it out uh, once and well to people so that they got the latest and greatest data. The simple fact is that people shouldn't have to know 
the organization chart of the federal government in order to get the services that they need out of the federal government. It's incredibly important that we recognize that our job as an entire entity is to deliver uh, services that folks need, but like going to, say, a Walmart, you don't need to know the org chart of a Walmart in order to do your shopping. And so we need to figure out ways that we can conquer the hierarchy, conquer the differences between the agencies, collaborate, and get great outcomes for people. Um, part of the way we're going to do that is, uh, if we can move ahead, I don't know why this thing isn't working, uh, is by actually leveraging um, people's ability to participate in government. We've started a program called challenge.gov at uh, GSA. We've had over 260 challenges. We had 16,000 uh, participants. Uh, in one instance, we had this great DOE challenge where they, um, they had a $10 million prize for coming up with a, a new light bulb, this light bulb that might be the last light bulb you ever buy. Um, and uh, what we've done is say, look, we don't know what the answers to all these problems are. We know what the problem is we're trying to solve. And maybe by tapping into people um, more broadly, by really leveraging the wisdom of the crowd, we can come up with solutions that we wouldn't come up with ourselves. And that's what the whole challenge.gov platform is. And in many ways, it's a revolutionary notion about the, how the government is going to try to solve problems. We've done that within GSA on our own with something called the Great Ideas Hunt, where we've asked everyone within GSA, using a collaborative social media-based system, to say, look, how could GSA be better? And we got over 600 ideas, but more importantly, we got over 20,000 comments, people commenting on the ideas, people engaging across the hierarchy and across the geography to really ask questions about mission and outcome within GSA in a way that they normally wouldn't have been able to. And you certainly wouldn't have been able to if everything needed to go through the big corner wood panel office. Uh, we've also offered a tool called uh, USA Search, which has uh, got a very effective pricing mechanism, we think, at free. Um, where, which agencies can get a common platform for search on their internet sites and allows us then to get better data about how people are actually using those sites so that we can begin to tailor the sites more for what people are looking for rather than what we think they're looking for. We're also looking at tools like FedRAMP, which say are there ways that we can speed the process of uh, vendor, uh, 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 vendor solutions getting to agencies and agencies getting to vendors by pushing things uh, through a kind of a common um, certification process, in this instance for cloud-based software and security, by doing it once and by actually certifying it one time and let other, letting other agencies use that certification, we're able to reduce cost. And through collaboration and through cooperation, we're able to improve, increase uh, speed to market and, in this instance, improve the security of our uh, internet. But that requires agencies to do something, frankly, that was hard in kindergarten. Uh, it's kind of even harder in bureaucracy, and that's share. <laughs> People need to start saying to themselves, not like, what, you know, what's in it for me? They have to say, what's in it for us? And how can we collaborate? How can we leverage each other's resources? How can we leverage the entire scale of the federal government? What solution have I come up with that you can use? And how do we actually create an environment in which it happens? And I think it's really hard, because in the traditional hierarchies, in which we've built these cylinders of excellence, these uh, fully vertically integrated operations that uh, provide everything uh, that the agency needs to, to do what it needs to do, where there's an awful lot of pride and um, uh, 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 professional interest wrapped up, by the way, that's GSA, um, <laughs> uh, wrapped up in the structure of the way things are done and, and, and that the, this agency needs to stand alone and that you know, we can't trust the other guy and it's hard to collaborate and it's complicated to do. You know, this, is, uh, this is in many ways kind of the organizational manifestation of that same physical hierarchy, not recognizing the sweeping transformation of technology that is going to require us. In fact, people are going to demand that we do more and we do better. And so what I think we need to do is start working together to chip away at this hierarchical structure. We need to get together as, as uh, groups of agencies and as, as teams of federal professionals and start asking ourselves, is the old structure the way we're going to be able to succeed in the future? Or can we actually work together? Can we collaborate? Can we, uh, 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 can we pound away at the base of these structures and actually tear it down and build a new federal government, the one that meets the needs of the American people. I think we can. I look forward to working with all of you in doing that. Thank you very much.